friends, welcome back. Welcome back today, you guys. Um, it is our fourth day of doing projects from my book, Steam, Play, and Learn. And I'm excited today because we're going to make a DIY toy that also paints. Did you ever think that could happen? <laughs> um, anyways, this is a really simple project. Uh, it's in two parts. So we're going to have it basically the first part is we're going to make a very simple top. And then we are going to use it to do spin art. Now, if you don't want to do the messy part, I have a, a short alternative for you. Um, and if you want, you can just build the top with me today. And then later, you can go ahead and try the messy part. But the messy part is kind of the fun part. I mean, this making the top and spinning the top is awesome. But adding in this layer of spin art is pretty cool. So I hope that even if you don't do that with us today, that you will try that in the future. All right, so I am going to turn my camera around in just a second. I do want to quickly mention that tomorrow is the last day to enter the giveaway for my book. Again, this is my book, Steam Play and Learn, and it has 20 Steam projects for preschool aged and up. Um, great for families who have kids of multiple ages. Uh, I know right now it's, I think there was like maybe one or none um, available on Amazon. It's sold out right now. I think they're restocking though. So I would enter my giveaway because I don't know exactly when there's gonna be more copies available. Bookshop is another place you can get it. Um, they support independent bookstores, but I just know that right now it's been, it's been doing really well, which I'm happy about uh, during this time because we feature a lot of projects that use basic materials. So I'm glad it's that people are finding it useful. Um, but if you aren't able to get it online right now, entering the giveaway is a great way to do it. I have 14 copies to give away, okay, seven pairs. So to enter that giveaway, let me just repeat how you do it. I will put a link in the description below. You go to my Instagram page via the link and it's one post. You'll recognize my book in the post. And all you need to do is simply leave a comment uh, leave a comment for, well, basically leave a comment and tag a friend. So we really want you to be able to gift this to somebody you know that might also uh, enjoy it. So that's it. That's all you got to do. So easy, right? And if you want, I would also love it if you, you know, followed me on Instagram, followed my publisher as well, Quarto Kids. Um, that would be awesome too. But the basic way to enter is just to simply go over there and tag a friend. Uh, so I hope you guys do it. Closes tomorrow. Okay, let's go ahead and get started on our project. Okay, okay, so I'm not turning my lights on today because man, we're using CDs and they are super reflective and I don't wanna blow, <laughs> I don't wanna like, it's already reflecting back into the camera. So I didn't wanna blow you guys out with a whole bunch of reflected light. But basically what you're going to need for this project, let me actually, let me show you in the book first and then I'll move my book aside. So we're doing spin art tops. Okay. We're going to be making spinning tops out of a CD, a marker cap and a marble. So those are the three things that you will need for this. If you don't have a CD, you could also grab a, um, a plastic lid. The CDs are really convenient because they have this nice handy hole in the center. Uh, so if you have any old CDs, I know kids, you might not even know what a CD is, but parents do. When we were, uh, when I was a college student in the 90s, this is all I ever used to used for like storing documents um, and for, this is where all the music was on CDs. So basically I had a whole stack of these um, God, we have so many CDs. <laughs> I have lots of CDs in my possession. Let's put it that way. But I also have a lot just sitting around because when these sort of went out of, um, and we just didn't start really needing these anymore when we have other ways of storing and transmitting docu documents, I still have a whole stack of these lying around. So I never felt good about throwing them away, so I kept them. And I'm glad I did because they do come in handy for craft projects. So where was I? Once we make our top, we're going to turn it into an art spinner and we're going to make, use it to create spin art. If you do the spin art part of the project with us, I want you to grab a container. This one's a little beat up, but I want you to grab a container with high 
sides, okay? The spin art does go, the paint goes everywhere, and so high sides will help contain the mess. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So, as I mentioned before, you're gonna need a CD, you're going to need a marble. I'm gonna make two of these, so I'll get two CDs, two marbles, and you're gonna need an old marker cap. So if you're like me and you have all these, this is an old washable, dried out washable marker, grab this, take the cap, you're gonna use it for today's project. Take the uh, parents, if you might wanna help with this, or actually you can just dip this into a bowl, into a cup of water, leave it overnight, and you're gonna, all the leftover ink is gonna flow out of here and you're gonna have yourself a little DIY watercolor. Um, I gotta find a use for this, for the body of the marker, because then I could literally recycle the entire marker for projects. <laughs> I haven't found that yet, so if you think of anything, uh, you have to email me and let me know, okay? All right, the other thing you're gonna need is hot glue. So if you are on the younger side, um, parents, you may wanna help with this first part of the assembling the top. Um, if you're an older child and you're comfortable using a hot glue gun, by all means, uh, do this part. Just make sure, like I use this glue gun that has, oh, it's on high, um, that has two settings, high and low. Uh, you should probably, I recommend that all kids use a low temperature glue gun because Glue guns are hot, and the hot, the ones that are high temp are very hot, and they can burn you. So we let our kids in our classes use them, but we go over a lot of safety precautions, and we only use the low temp ones, okay? So anyways, now that I've gotten that, we've talked about that, let's start making our top. So what we're gonna need, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn our top, let's turn it over so we have the shiny side up. Doesn't totally matter, but you know, let's do it that way for now. And I'm, we're going to end up hot, we're gonna hot glue our marble into the center of the lid, or I'm sorry, of the CD. So I'm gonna apply some hot glue here, put that in, then I'm gonna add a little more, just to make a nice bead so it's really, really well adhered, okay? And I'm gonna let that dry for a second. Get off all these little glue strands. You wanna make sure that the that you don't get glue on the very top of the marble. Well, it will end up being the bottom of the marble when we flip this, but right now it's the top because that will impede the way the top spins, okay? So make sure that this is nice and clean. You can always scrape the glue off if you get it on there. Now I'm gonna turn this over and I'm going to add my marker cap. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna put a bead of glue around there, add this. Then when it's placed, when it's pretty much in place, I'm gonna add another layer of glue and let that dry. Now I'm gonna show you something really cool. My friend Leslie over on Pink Stripey Socks, um, she's got a great blog. She did a project where she hot glued markers to CDs. And you can go over to her site and see what it looks like. Because when you do that and you're not, if you're using a marker that does have ink in it, you can get a really cool, like a, a marker, like a spin art. It's a top that draws, let's put it that way. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and make a second one of these. You don't have to make a second one. But I'm gonna do that so I have a couple to show you. And ooh, if you don't want to do the, um, the painting part of this, another option for you is, oh, that's got to dry for a second, is to grab some Sharpies right now and you can decorate. Whoa, I got so much glue that my top, that this is falling off. Let me reposition. Okay, we got to let it dry. So we love hot glue because it dries quick, but you do need to let it dry. Um, if you don't wanna do the, the painting part or you don't have those available right now, a really simple thing you can do is just grab a Sharpie and you can start decorating your top. You can also hot glue things to your top. We've done this with uh, our students and sometimes they take like gems 
um, really bright objects and then they make designs out of them. They hot glue it to their top. So this is an alternative if you don't want to do the next step, okay? And let's let this, so this one's dry, so I'm going to show you what it looks like, okay? Spins super fast, super easy. It's super easy. There we go. It's going off out of frame. <laughs> this one, there we go. So um, years ago, I, I lit these up with some LEDs. I need to get back onto that idea. It was a little complicated with the circuitry, but eventually I want to make these when they light up so that you can do like glow in the dark tops. Wouldn't that be cool? Okay, so that's the basic part. Now we're going to take this and we're going to turn this into like a mini spin art machine. I'm grabbing my bin. I'm going to turn the lights on now. Okay, I got a bin with high sides, as I mentioned, because when we start working with this, the, we're going to put paint on this, and it's going to splatter. Now, why is it going to splatter? It's going to splatter because of this a concept called centrifugal force, or force called centrifugal force, not a concept. Um, it's actually what we call a fictitious force. That's a very complicated term, but just know that what it means is that there is a force when an object spins in a circular motion like this that pushes out from the center, okay? And we're going to see what that does to paint that lands on this surface while it is in motion, okay? For the paint, you want to make sure to use washable paint, okay? This is going to go everywhere, so if you use non, you know, acrylic paint, it's and it gets on you, that's it. It's, pa it's permanent. <laughs> so I use washable paint. I really like Ikea's paints. Um, they have some with a really, like a fine tip that are really good because you can control just exactly how much paint comes out of them. I don't have those paints today, but I had some of these. So these have a little bit more a little bit more paint comes out. You wanna get something where you can control the amount of paint that comes out easily. Because we're gonna be basically spinning this and squeezing paint on it. And if you have, you know, something that has a big opening, you're gonna probably get a giant blob of paint on here. And I don't want you to do that. So get something that you have some control over. Also grab some paper towels. Um, when we've done this with our students at camp, sometimes these get, depending on how much paint you have going, uh, the handles get a little bit soaked with paint and they become slippery and hard to spin. So keep a paper towel handy in case that happens. So now here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna spin this and then I'm going to paint, drop some paint on it. Okay, and we're gonna watch. Now you're seeing it go spread out around my container. Let me do it again. And now that centrifugal force is basically causing the paint to splatter around the edges. And if I get a really good spin on this, now this paint is a little thick. If it was a little thinner, it would probably be a little more apparent. But we'll see what this looks like when the top stops. So now you can also see how the paint itself is flowing out, okay, away from the center point. Let me add some, uh, woo, there it's going. <laughs> I'm gonna add some blue, contrasting color. Whoops, let me get it spinning first. And so you're basically creating, you've created a tool. So I wanted to mention that because a lot of us, like I like to talk about the steam in projects. A lot of us think of um, technology as, computers and electronics, but technology can refer to any kind of tool that we've invented over the centuries, um, the millennia, really, to help us do work. And in this case today, we have invented or created our own tool for painting. So the paint, the paint is, and the design here is actually being done by the top, which is a tool. So you've got a little technology involved in this. Plus we're also doing action art. Um, and you can see that, it's like so pretty, huh? 
Um, action art and process art are types of art that are really about the process of the making. I mean, this is a lot of fun, but there's not going to be a lot of, I'm not going to be able to display this afterwards. You could get a large piece of paper if you had a large bin and try to capture the design. But to me, the, the, the fun of this is really just in the, the making, okay? And the spinning and the experimenting and all that good stuff. Now this container is a little tight, so that's why it keeps getting it keeps bumping into the sides. I like to do this project with our campers. We get these giant um, containers from IKEA. They're like under bed storage containers, and they're really shallow and really large. They are great for this project. They're great for sensory bins as well, or if you want to make a DIY water table, because they're really easy to get into and they're large. And they're great for this. They're really good for this project. So now I'm seeing like all the paint spreading outward because of that centrifugal force. Okay, I'm going to do one more time. Woo, I got it right in the center. Of my That's what I mean. So a lot of times when we do this with our campers, they end up getting the, um, see, I've gotten the paint on here and it's a little bit slippery now. So let me, that's going to make it hard for me to spin. So I'm going to basically wipe it off. And then I'm gonna keep going. And let's add a little more, let's add a little more green. Just need a little bit. And I'm so tempted to just grab it, but it's so, I, I just think this is just a beautiful project. I'm kind of obsessed with a lot of spin art projects. Um, when we've done a lot of variations on my blog before because there's just a beauty in it. And I love science in motion. So I love being able to see science in motion. There's also a lot of optical stuff with, with art. I mean, sorry, with um, tops. So it's interesting to see what your eye perceives. There's all these colors on here, but what your eye perceives when it spins is something different. Because your eye cannot possibly... So when I spin this right now, I bet you're going to see blue... But there's really just two spots of blue, but it's going to look like a line as it spins. Continuous line, because my eye cannot perceive that. It's spinning too fast for my eye to perceive the separate, um, sec the separate blobs of paint. And so what I see is a line. Now, I know what you're seeing on my, the camera is a little different just because of the frame rates. But um, if you're doing this in person, you'll know what I'm talking about. All right, I'm going to spin this around. Spin that around, no pun intended, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> and that's our project for today, you guys. So again, I hope that you will go on, whoops, to our Instagram account and please do, I did put my hair up for that because it's messy. Please do enter our giveaway. Um, this project is also on my blog, so I will throw a link to that down below. And be sure to subscribe, you guys. It was nice to see you today, and I will see you again tomorrow for the last project in our Steam Play and Learn series. All right, bye, guys.